today I'm very excited to share with you how well our second round of garlic germinated. And this is with a special treatment, a pre-treatment of soaking the garlic cloves in fish emulsion fertilizer and baking soda. And then comparing that to just directly planting the cloves right into the ground. When it came to the early purple Italian, it actually had the same germination rate where the first cloves popped up in six days. I was pretty excited this morning. I'm watering all of the garden with rainwater. And look what I found. The last early purple Italian showed up. So all nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is 100% germination in this square. Now it took about 23 days for all of them to pop up, which is a big difference because all of them popped up. And that's not true for the ones that I directly planted in the ground. As for the Texas rose, that one had a much longer germination rate. In fact, double. It took nine days for the direct planting and it took 18 days for the pre-soaked cloves to come up. Oh, why the difference? And I can say that we had temperatures starting to drop at the end of October and we were from the low 90s, upper 80s. And that next week when I planted the pre-soaked cloves, we were in the low 80s for highs. We we're going into much cooler temperatures by the end of the month. So perhaps that's why it took so much longer to germinate that second round. However, those all came up as well. Unfortunately, I don't know how long the last ones took. We had some vacations and you know how it is where you just kind of give up. You want to give plants their chance to come up and they did all come up. So I am very happy about that. But unfortunately, that time kind of got away from me and I didn't mark when the last one popped up, but they all popped up. So let me give you a tour on how it's going now. Looking at our handy master map of the Texas rose cloves that were not treated, we can see we're missing one here, there, and under the tomato plant, there's nothing growing right there. Of note, this is really interesting. The cloves for Texas rose are really tightly, they're really tightly knit. And in order to peel apart the layers, I just didn't feel comfortable. One of them I really thought had two cloves, but it was just too hard to take apart. So you can see right there how it's got exposed skin right there. And this pod, while it's separate, I'm wondering if I should just leave it so that the integrity of this outer one. Two popped up right there. And that'll be really fun to see what that looks like later in the year when it's time to harvest. Now comparing these Texas rows, this again is the untreated ones with the treated ones right behind. And they're really of a similar height. I can do a measurement here. Let's say between 10 and 11 inches for this top one right here. There are some smaller ones, but on the same par. You can see on this side, we have a bunch of early purple Italian with two Texas rows. Interestingly enough, on this side, the Texas rose seems to be doing much better. Just over 10 inches there. Some of the early purple Italian on this side, very healthy. There's one missing here. Get it from that same angle at which I was planting, but there's one that's missing right here. And another that's missing right there. Those are the two that did not end up coming out. But that is, <laughs> we'll say 11 inches. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's definitely more than 12 inches. Now over in the in ground bed, this is another place where I just had one square and just dedicated it to the garlic. Probably a little too close together. That looks like a weed over there now. In any case, everything is just a little bit shorter, probably because of the competition, the spacing between these and the fact of the matter too is it's interesting to note this is a bit of a separate experiment and i probably should exclude the patch over here as well as the untreated ones over there this is treated 
that is untreated. But it's interesting to know where the ground is better. Like radishes, for example, these seem to be going really well here, but they're not going as well in the in-ground bed. So this is somewhat of a separate experiment where I'm seeing, hey, how do the different types of treatments work, even in a different environment? But everything popped up in the in-ground bed. It's a smaller set of, of samples, but it's looking good so far. Really pretty. It was a mixed bag. And also this is about four weeks longer than I expected. I expected just to give you the results within two weeks and here we are week six. Overall though, I'm really excited about what is growing. And I think that I would soak the garlic a bit longer before trying this out, but a 100% germination rate. I do have less garlic of the soaked version than I did of the direct planting, but 100% germination is really good. So I would definitely try that again and I would soak it a bit longer. Again, like last time, I had read some articles that said anywhere from 15 minutes to I believe it was 12 hours and then others that said anywhere from 8 hours to 24 hours soaking would really help. I did about 4 hours. So I think next year that's what I would try. I would try soaking one group of cloves for four hours which is the middle of the road for that 15 minutes to 12 hours I believe it was and then do another one with a much longer soak for 24 hours and plan it at the same time to make sure that at least that part of it is the same and I will try that out next year. If you would like to learn how to create that mixture for yourself check out this video next. Thanks for watching.